I mean, I don't think that you're ever going to get to a spot where you're perfect. So I'm always looking at new gear. I'm always looking at new editing and new tip, tips for that. Um, even new distribution strategies, new platforms. Always just keep testing and see what hits and what, what you like and what works with your audience. So I kind of cut you off when I said, what are you uh, working on now? You talked yeah. about Santee Saturdays. I, was, and then, I, uh, about that. I just wanted to make sure you said, hey, we did 100 episodes and we did this, this, this. I'm yes. like, man, did they just instantly just do it and it was all perfect? No, um, it was rough. So let's continue. <laughs> Today we have Brian Kochi, media and marketing manager for Whistle Realty Team in San Diego. Brian has produced over 1,000 videos in the past four years, and today he wants to teach you how to become the media mayor of your city. Let me flip the script on you. Please. Instead of a real estate agent that's listening, let's say they already have somebody hired uh, that's doing media, okay. and that person is listening saying, how do you stay on task? How do you, how do you keep to a good schedule if you're doing all these things? What's a, a, a good piece of advice that you would give to that person that, that needs help because they, they, their excuse is, I, I can't do this for 30 people and there's two of us. We know that it is possible for, you know, for, to a certain degree, but what's one thing that you would recommend for them to be able to, to stick to a podcast that's weekly, to stick to a show, to do something and actually continue to do it? I mean, you got to commit, right? And it's just like having accountability partners, except if you or I were accountability partners and you well, we said, we're going to go to the gym, obviously I'm not going to the gym. Um, but if you said, Hey, we're going to go to the gym and I don't go, I disappoint you. Right. Well, when you do a weekly show, you're disappointing hundreds, if not thousands of people that are looking forward to that content. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's accountability and, and, and staying consistent is, is the way, obviously, you know, that you're doing, this is 20, 20 some odd episodes in so far, and it's not easy, but you made a commitment to do it. Um, so one, it, it's, it's keeping consistent and showing that you're consistent in all that you do, right? If they go, oh yeah, I see that he has a process for listing homes. I see he has a process for helping buyers sell homes. And then I see he has a process for, uh, his videos. And then you do one market update a year and you, you call it the May market update. And then next year is September. They're going to go, wait, there, there's some discontinu discontinuity here. Right. And so then that introduces doubt. So if anything, it's, good for your business to stay consistent because they see you doing consistency in one thing. They see it in all things or vice versa. They see you're not consistent in one thing. They're not going to expect you to be consistent in the others. Are there any tools or programs or resources that you're utilizing to help you stay on track to, to get, you know, get you through all of this? Yeah. So we utilize Trello. Um, it's a free program, a uh, web-based program. Uh, Asana is also another program that's very similar. Um, but it's, we use it basically as a do doing done board. And so I have my, everything I'm going to be doing, or actually everything that I'm going to do in one board. Uh, once I start on it, I put it in the doing board and then move it over to done when we're done. Uh, the most important part of that checklist or that process is I have a, a fourth column called templates. And so every time we do a everything East County video, every time we do a listing video or photo shoot or uh, green screen, every, every new, Every time we do anything, I have a template that's got a checklist 20 or so long saying, okay, shoot it, edit it, or import it, edit it, export it, upload it to YouTube, upload it to Facebook, optimize for YouTube, run ads on Facebook. I mean, I've, it's got it all spelled out. So I know if I haven't done something because I haven't checked it off. So Trello is so, huge. So for somebody that's jumping into a new project, just document all the things that you're doing and then see, okay, did those work? Did those not work? Um, because, you know, even like myself, there's tons of things that I want to do, but if I look back on them in a few months and go, oh yeah, we already did that. Let's just do it again. Oh man, what did I do? Did I do that? Did we do this? How did exactly. we do it? What time was it? Yep. Was it good? Was it not good? So for anybody that's listening that doesn't know who you are, doesn't know anything about what we're talking about uh, right now, tell us some of the things that you're currently working on. So what we're working on now is a new series called Everything East County. It was spun off of our last series called East County Eats, which was spun off of our previous series, Santee Saturdays. Again, a weekly show. Those all three of them have been weekly shows. We put out an episode every week. Um, let me kind of backtrack a little bit to Santee Saturdays so that way I can explain what I'm doing now. We decided to focus on, again, this. we started this in April in 2015, did 100 episodes, one a week, every week, every Saturday. Um, so we focused on business. But wait, wait, wait. That was a huge stat. <laughs> yeah. Every week, 100 episodes. How did you, what did you use to get started on that? Did you come in with the professional gear and this, and you had the everything planned out? How, how did episodes one through 10 look like 
as as opposed to where you're at now. Yeah. So episodes one through ten versus we'd probably be on episode to uh, 180 or okay. so based on our series. Um, so we started off, I had some gear. We started off tripods. We had two mics, but sometimes we were interviewing three people. So that was a mistake. Um, they were okay. Um, the very first way we started is because we didn't, we had kind of an idea, but we weren't sure. Um, what we did is we connected with our lender and said, Hey, we kind of want to do this. Can we interview you? We'll, we'll throw some B roll over top of it and we'll, kind of see what it looks like. Um, so that way we could use that to pitch to future businesses. Um, so I had the gear, um, but it was a lot more static than it is now. It's a very similar setup to this here, um, which is fine, which is preferable in a podcast, not so much in a, uh, a video where we wanted more motion to it. Um, so we had the couple mics, we had the cameras on the tripods. Um, we started out with questions on a piece of paper if you've ever seen Kyle talk on stage, he doesn't ever have notes. He do, he's more of a kind of a improvised type of guy. He doesn't do well with a sheet of paper. So he would he would be talking and then he go. So question number, th- it was just really weird. Um, so we stopped that pretty quickly. Um, so that was kind of the first couple episodes, and we've progressed from there to doing all things handheld and gimbal, and we got multiple mics, and I mean it's grown huge from there in order for it to get to where it's at today what would be a a, a good piece of advice that uh you know f- somebody that wants to produce a show like the ones that you're currently producing but there's are still stuck in episodes one through ten and and how they look what's what's a good, good piece of advice is it was it editing was it new equipment was it having a better plan what was it keep testing okay right? i think the, the term uh progress not perfection is huge um People aren't looking for it to be absolutely perfect. I think some of the mistakes is what makes us human. What It makes us more relatable. Um, but I, it's not going to be perfect right away. And just so keep testing, keep seeing what works, keep uh, progressing until you get to a spot where you're, I mean, I don't think that you're ever going to get to a spot where you're perfect. So I'm always looking at new gear. I'm always looking at new editing and new tip, tips for that. Um even new distribution strategies, new platforms, always just keep testing and see what hits and what, what you like and what works with your audience. So I kind of cut you off when I said, what are you uh, working on now? You talked yeah. about Santee Saturdays. I, was, and then, I, was uh, about that. I just wanted to make sure you said, hey, we did 100 episodes and we did this, this, this. I'm yes. like, man, did they just instantly just do it and it was all perfect? No, um, it was rough. So let's continue. It was rough. So we did that, <laughs> 100 episodes, went for almost two years. Um, we ran out of places to do. Um, in Santee's got a population of about 60,000. Uh, we ran out of businesses that were either interested or that had any sort of, uh, camera presence. Um, and not in terms of people, but just in terms of environment. We, we did a couple, um, that I think were, were great interviews and they're great business owners, but it's not a super sexy shot when you're interviewing, uh, the insurance agent and then you're doing video of people typing <laughs> and then video Paper. of people. Yeah. It's, it's just like, click, click. Uh, it, yes. <laughs> a lot of that. Um, so we, we kind of said, okay, well, what do we do next? Well, and we, we wanted to do, we wanted to avoid um, anything really related to politics and anything really related to religion. Um, we didn't want to bring that in. We didn't want it, to, it was just a personal decision we made. So, we went from there. We looked at our past episodes and said, okay, what did the best? Um, we said, okay, food did the best. We got the most reactions. We got the most engagement. Let's do our next series, East County Eats, all about food in East County. So East County is now, instead of one zip code, is 14 zip codes. Um, it's about a quarter of San Diego, and San Diego's pretty big. Um, so we focused on, again, one a week every week. We made it through about 70 episodes um, featuring everything from the uh, funky fries and burgers, which has the Buffalo chicken mac and cheese tater tots that we filmed from that to the local burger joint to, um, I mean, just literally the uh, frutiza, which is like a juice and fruit. Yeah. We've done everything. Um, so we got to episode about 70 of that and we said, okay, that was good. Let's kind of see what we're doing, what, what worked and where we want to go from that. Um, Kyle was getting busier and busier and each episode takes me about from from scheduling to editing 
to distribution it takes me about eight hours to, to film, to, sh- to edit, to distribute all that. So we said, okay, let's keep putting out content, but look for things that we can um, share the, share what our audience wants while reducing the, the load on us. So we went to kind of a new series called everything East County, where we're talking about literally everything East County. We're talking about uh, the current events that are happening. We're still talking about restaurants. And we're also talking about, we call the series uh, food for thought. And we just connect with the local historical societies and go back and talk about, you know, the hidden stairs in La Mesa, the lakeside rodeo or no, the lakeside uh, railroad that doesn't exist anymore. Just kind of showing the then and now type thing. And, and what are the results from the three shows? So it's been great. Um, Santee Saturdays was our longest going one, but probably our least successful in terms of views. Um, but it's always, it's not always about the views, right? We've built great relationships. And I think that's one thing that you really got to focus on. And I think that's what you're doing here is it's not always, you're not, and correct me if I'm wrong. You doing these podcasts is not 100% goal only giving content. If I could be so bold as to assume part of your, your strategy with this, and this, because this is our strategy here is part of it is getting content, building your brand, all that sort of stuff. But also another part of it is building relationships with the guests, getting to know them, being able to refer them business, getting referrals from them in return, just being a, a resource for them. What would you? A hundred percent. I mean, there's tons of people that ask me, so, you know, who are you selling banner ads to and who's the sponsor and where's this and where's that? I'm like, well, technically, I mean, I didn't even know that was a thing. We didn't even think about that. When yep. we first started, we literally we started with, uh, I don't know, some type of social media marketing, how to do this. And let's just talk about it. And that just led to, let's just do more people like it. And we, like you said, we grow closer with the guests and do other things as well, which is great. Absolutely. So, um, I mean, I guess it's hard to choose which has been most successful, right? Uh, East County Eats probably had the most amount of views. Um, Santee Saturdays, we got probably the most listings from it. But again, we've done a hundred episodes there. We're, We're on number nine of everything East County. Um, so, and everything East County has been really cool because we've also now spun off a Facebook group from it. And now we're getting probably the most engagement with everything East County between the videos is one portion of it, but really building relationships on Facebook within a group. Um, that's probably been the most successful part of this series. So a lot of people are going to hear what you just said and, and think of two things. One, let's go run and start a Facebook group and two, We can just do this and we get a lot of listings. How would you utilize the videos and how did those listings kind of manifest themselves? Because I'm assuming you, as I have permission now, since you assumed on me, I can assume on you. I'll tell you, I'll tell you if you're wrong. (laughs) You guys didn't walk in uh, with, Hey, we're here to film, you know, your, your barbecue bacon cheeseburger. But before we actually wanted to go over our listing presentation, just in case. Yeah. And so (laughs) I'm glad you how, did, how, did the, how did those listings kind of manifest? I'm glad the you video? brought that up because one thing that I don't want to, to, to portray is do video, get listing, do video, get, it's not that way. I mean, it's, it's not put up a billboard, get a listing. It doesn't work that way. A lot of this is branding and building relationships within the community. So for example, and, and you never know what's going to hit, right? The, one of our most successful videos, um, it was successful because the owner, we filmed a retirement community. It's right across the street here. Um, very, very sexy video. It's uh, people putting together puzzles and showing the pool. I, I mean, it was, it was, it, it was cool, but it wasn't a super exciting video. Um, and also was probably one of our poorest performers in terms of views. It's, it's got a very specific audience and that audience typically isn't the, the mass on Facebook, right? So, but because of that, we did that video. We connected with the marketing uh, team. We get a call or Kyle gets a call from the owner of the, the retirement community who we never met with. And he says, Hey, um, I'd like to sell my, my home. Would you come talk to me about it? Well, it just happened to be a $4 million listing in Poway. So not a bad gig. Um, There it is. Uh, I like to ask people when I photograph their house, you know, why did you choose this agent? Usually when the agent's not there, because then that's, then that's weird. But I say, well, why did you choose this agent? And there has been a couple of times where they go, well, look, I decided if I'm going to sell my house in Santee, I might as well go with the guy who knows Santee. So 
it, it was more of a, a spoke to our wheel of branding. Um, but it wasn't do one video, get one listing. It was do a bunch of videos. And because of that, plus the other stuff we do, get business from and it. What was the other stuff? I mean, we do a lot of direct mail. We have got a, it, got we it. have a uh, magazine that goes out to all of East County, um, Facebook ads. All, I mean, so everything else. again, as with anything else, you're not going to knock on one door and get one listing or you'd be knocking on quite a bit of doors. <laughs> yes. uh, you're not going to produce one video and get one listing. Um, but I think for anybody that wants to, that are already hasn't, you know, you want to do the things that make you happy. That's what I talk about all the time. Um, even if we're talking now and, and we're talking about food and you go, well, you know, I hate food, which I mean, I don't know many people who hate I, food. I, it I would be a, probably a bad is, is it, people view food as a passion or as fuel. Exactly. Right. And if they're like, yeah, it's just something to get me through the day, probably don't make a food show. Yeah. So exactly. Don't do food. Like a lot of people have asked, well, why are you guys doing this specific topic? I said, for me, I'm not passionate about talking about the milkshake. However, I can bring somebody in that's going to talk about the milkshake and they're going to sell you the trash can at the same time because that's how good they are. Yeah. And, and, and I think it's key that any type of video series you're going to do, you know, have somewhat of a passion in it because not you, somewhat, because it's hard doing one. If you're doing one a week, it's hard to keep that up. Then if you have somewhat of a passion into it, you can find even more avenues to actually discover that, wait, this was actually not somewhat of a passion. This is actually what I love or, and, or it wasn't. And then you pivot. Exactly. And, and I think that a lot of people have tried to do the the food thing and you can tell like they take a bite of a burger and it's like, Ooh, so good. And it's like, yeah, they, they actually did not like that at yeah, all. Yeah, I don't um, care. so you went from Santee Saturdays to East County eats now doing everything East County for somebody that wants to do a weekly video series. Is that your recommendation to do a community series talking about um, the different businesses within that community? What would be a good video series that somebody can, can do? Well, like you said, you got to find your passion, right? I mean, for us, we've kind of moved around because we've pivoted as we've gone and we kind of go where the consumers are going. Um, I think finding something that, that you're really passionate about and that's got a big enough, not only audience, but, but runway, right? If you want to do dog parks and you want to do it in the subdivision in a sit in an area, Maybe there's one dog park that's not going to last you very long. So you got to kind of find that to make sure you have enough runway with it. Um, but I mean, that's one thing that we found that works really well for us is, is we, we love being involved in the community. Kyle's really involved with the Santee chamber. Um, and so business owners is, is something that we connect well with. Um, but I mean, if it's, if it's certain shops, if it's fashion, Kyle talks about the four F's food, fashion, family, and fitness. Um, so, I mean, maybe you're a big, Obviously, I am not a big fitness buff, but if you're a big fitness buff, maybe you interview the different gyms. Maybe you do the different um, exercises at the different CrossFit gyms. I don't know. Um, but find what you're passionate about because it's hard to do it once a week, every week. Um, you have to be extremely passionate about it and then some. So what are you passionate about? What what gets you the most excited about the things that you guys are doing and, and what's going to be happening in the future? Yeah, so I really enjoy... Um, growth in terms of uh, the videos, not only just uh, in, in terms of quality, I, I'm a big gear junkie. So obviously while you guys were setting up, I asked you guys lots of questions about all the gear. I love- going, And we looked at you like, what? <laughs> yeah. So I'm a big gear junkie. I love buying new gear. I just told Tom, I said, okay, I think the next camera, I'm going to wait until this one. And he goes, I thought you just bought a camera two months ago. I thought you were done. I said, no, that just put me off until they, they announced new ones. So growing that way, growing with editing and different different styles. And then also with distri different distribution methods, I, I'm really enjoying finding um, really you optimizing our YouTube channel. Now we've split it into two, one focusing just on real estate agents, one focusing just on buyers and sellers in San Diego. Um, so really kind of optimizing distribution channels and, and making it right for the people that want to consume our content. And you guys just recently came back from a mastermind that you guys put on. Yeah. Tell me about that. What were some of the key takeaways? Yeah. So we hosted, we called it our media mayor mastermind playing off of Gary V's uh, digital mayor uh, philosophy. And we wanted to keep it small. We had, I think 12 people there. Uh, three of them brought their videographers and really wanted to show not only what we've done, um, but how to implement it, do one-on-one -on -one kind of strategy sessions with people. Um, and then the really cool thing is we, we talked about Trello earlier. 
I had all my checklists and everyone that went there was given all of my checklists from property photos to radio to uh, emails that I send to um, businesses before, during, and after. Um, they have basically my playbook of this is exactly how to do it. We made sure we were very specific in, in um, having people come that were either just starting a series, have started a series, or were on the cusp of starting a series. We didn't want to spend the two days of talking about should you do video? Should you not do video? What is Facebook? <laughs> right. We wanted to really this dive is a deep camera. In. Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, I went to, um, marketing edge, Tom Ferry marketing edge. Uh, I, 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 we went to the first one together. I think you were in Chicago. Chicago. Yeah. Um, and so I was, this, this was my assumption incorrectly. I was expecting it to be really dive in deep until I got there and I realized it, it's marketing for real estate agents. It's not, the dive deep into marketing for marketers. Would you agree with that? It, it's not level 10, it's level one through four. Would you agree? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did, did I, I just, don't want to say anything did I just wrong. Throw you in the bu- oh, no, 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 you didn't throw me in the bus. I'll say whatever I want to say. <laughs> I think, I, no, and, and I, I think it's exactly. And that's a what, good thing. That's why there's other things out there. And I, I think it's exactly what they should do. Yeah. I, I was under the impression, and I think I made this up myself because this is what I wanted. Me too. That it was going to be just for the the marketers the 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 people that are hired for marketing the people that re- like yourself that really dive deep into marketing well that's because there's too many agents that want to be every single role do yes. everything be transaction coordination be the escrow officer be an agent be the mortgage broker i see that too i'm the agent and the mortgage broker i'm like wait a minute you're not allowed to do that I, you know, they're like, they're doing all these different things, which you and I go, okay, from a marketing standpoint, if were, this is just talking, talking to marketers, this is going to be perfect. Yes. But okay. I didn't understand that they wanted to spread it as why, I mean, if, if they did what we were doing, they wouldn't pack the house and they'd have to charge a lot more for it. Right. You'd have a lot smaller audience. You'd have to have pay a lot more for it. So it, it was a fantastic event. It was great for people that want to, I think it's great for even brokers that have marketing directors. So they have kind of an understanding of what was going on, right? Rather than like, Hey, I hired a marketing person. They posted on Facebook. I don't have a listing yet. Well, that's not how it works. So I, I think it's a great event. What I wanted to do is take people that have done things like marketing edge think people that have done that have hired marketing directors that have gone really deep into it and really laser focus in on this community series. So we did that. We're going to do another one in September. Um, just really diving deep on being the media mayor, how to do it, how to approach businesses, what to do once you once you have that relationship, how to build it, how to make money off of it, all that sort of stuff. Sweet. Yeah. So it seems like you guys aren't doing that much around here. No, I, I'm <laughs> so bored. So with all the with all the things that you're doing, what let me let me make sure I rephrase this so somebody listening understands. There's got to be some things that are frustrating doing all of these different things. There's got to be times when you're like, man, I got this on my plate, that on my plate. How do I prioritize this? Working with Kyle, what would you say is one of the things that is just, man, I wish <laughs> I wish we didn't have to do this or, hey, this is, you know, a little bit frustrating. You know, what are some of the things that are just not easy? Because, you know, I definitely don't want to portray you nor anybody else is, Hey, this is perfect. Everything's perfect. We do this. We live in a fantasy world. Just go on, you know, go to Best Buy, go hire somebody. You're going to make money. We're going to do events. It's, it's not easy. There's gotta be some struggles that you've had, some things that have been a challenge, maybe some mistakes that you've made that, Hey, somebody listening to might uh, be able to not make the same mistakes. That was a long question. Yeah. So simplify the question for me. Cause you asked like four questions in there. What's one mistake that you've encountered that going back, I don't know, you said four years yeah, ago, you it. would have changed um, have, or done differently. I, I would have a solid distribution plan in place because we did so many videos that didn't get any airplay because I had no idea what to do with them. So having a solid distribution plan in place um, and actually giving as much weight, if not more to distribution than the front end. All I was focusing on was, was shooting, was editing, making a cool video, but then I didn't really have the the time, the energy, or the knowledge to push forward with it. So I think having that be as big of piece, if not bigger, than the content is a, a big mistake that I made. And and if I didn't have Tom today, 
I wouldn't be, I still wouldn't be distributing it at, at the level I am. Um, and there's still, I see big gaps in my game now that I, I can really fill in as we keep pushing. And I think that's huge because there are tons of people out there that tell you, you have to produce X amount of content every single day between X hours on different days and yada, huda, yada all these different things, right? Yada, huda. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it sounds like because if you're not producing anything to be told, hey, you you need five videos a week and do this and do all these different things, it's just, it's not feasible. But also it's not, it's not in your best interest to do that because you're not going to be taking advantage of the, the content that you're creating. You're not going to get it seen by people because you're just automatically onto the next. So you forget to post it here or do this or, or do these different, different things. So anybody that's listening that is starting out, that is creating video, make sure that you get it seen, get it onto the platforms, allow it to, you know, live there before you go on to the next one. Um, because it doesn't do any, do, do you any good just staying on your, uh, on your hard drive? True. And to be tactical, I know we talked about this, uh, the platforms that I'm really into and the ones that I'm moving forward into, um, Facebook is really big for us. That's where we get a bit, a lot of our audience. We've created a Facebook group. We've have uh, three or four now, but we have a Facebook group just for agents. Um, but putting it out on Facebook and then running ads to the people that you want to see it is huge. Uh, we focus a lot on, we're focusing a lot more now on YouTube. Um, I think that's hugely important. It being the number two search engine in the world. Uh, it's kind of important that it's there. Uh, Instagram, we are finding IGTV, IGTV is working really well for us in terms of views. We're getting a lot more than if we used cut story and put it up there. Um, so those are our big three platforms. Um, I'm working on pushing more onto LinkedIn and Google my business. Those are the other two platforms I'm really starting to work into. We've been actually putting a lot out on Google My Business too. And what I've been recommending to agents is just take whatever content is resonating well on the other platforms and just throw it on throw it on over there because any post that you do there is basically boosting your organic ranking so fast. Exactly. It's, it's so easy. Before we go, one piece of advice that you're going to give to uh, somebody that's doing video, video. Man, we got like a lot of weird words yeah and you've got another one after this so uh have fun with that lots of water one person one person one piece of advice that you're giving to somebody that uh needs to learn how to talk no one piece of advice that you're going to give to a a fellow marketer that's in the real estate space about something that you've done in the past two to three months that has worked well that they should be doing right now the one piece of advice that i would give to a fellow marketer, get them into um, pushing their business forward is really focusing on YouTube. And now I don't think that sounds funny. It's been something we've done for a long time, but really optimizing the videos that you have up there, um, really creating videos with YouTube in mind because that searchability is huge. So I think focusing on YouTube is really important. Um, and also to kind of flip that around, Facebook groups are so important. If, if Facebook is your platform, you need to be, if you're not going to create a group, because there's a lot to do, you know, you have a group yourself. There's a lot to do when managing a group and posting content, but being involved in Facebook groups, I think is the best way to get your name out there amongst others. Um, what, what piece of, he didn't like that answer. What tool? Right. Well, I want to make sure that somebody that's listening doesn't just hear, go, go put your videos on YouTube um, even though it could just be as simple as just post your videos to YouTube, what are you using to maximize YouTube? Yeah. So I use a program called tube buddy. Um, and what that does, is it helps us again. It gives us a checklist on the side. It says, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. So if nothing else, it reminds me, Oh yeah, I forgot to add end cards or an end screen or cards or anything like that. Um, but it also helps you with tags. And my favorite thing about tube buddy is it'll, when you look at your older videos that you uploaded that have no title, no description, no tags, you go in there and you look at the suggestions from TubeBuddy with the tags. It will tell you, hey, you have 38 views. When people searched this, we showed them your video. Oh, maybe I'll add that as a tag and I'll add tags similar to that because I know what they're searching for. So, I mean, with that, I've learned people misspell Kyle's name wrong a lot. So now instead of W-H-I-S-S-E-L, sometimes I'll do it with the whistle like a like you're blowing a whistle and so I'll, I'll kind of see what people are searching for and then adding tags to help them find the videos that they really want 
There's the answer that I was looking for. Okay. I, I knew you had an answer in mind. I'm like, what, just tell me what you want me to say. I'll say it. I appreciate your time. I know that uh, obviously you're super busy, so it's it's great for us uh, to connect. I'm glad that I was uh, allowed to come in here and we just set up shop. So thank you so much. Of course. And uh, we'll be talking soon. Sounds Sweet. great. Thanks. Hey, everybody. This is Jonathan Hawkins. Thank you so much for staying until the very end of this podcast. I definitely appreciate it. As always, make sure to reach out to me via social media at Jonathan Hawkins official. Send me a comment. Shoot me a DM. If you have any questions, you can also comment below. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe below. And remember, who you hire truly matters.